Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast channel, reminding you if you want to be a part of the fastest growing Texas Tech YouTube community, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech and Big 12 all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. Now, before we get into Texas Tech men's basketball and previewing the West Virginia game, happy opening day to all those that celebrate. Texas Tech baseball is back in the swing of things as it is opening day at Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park and the Texas Tech Red Raiders, the number 24 Texas Tech Red Raiders, will play Gonzaga in their opening series of the year. Also wanted to give a shout out to one of the greatest Texas Tech Red Raiders of all time. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It's simply the truth. And that's exactly what he is. And it's Donnie Anderson. Uh, this from Texas Tech football, college football Hall of Famer and Texas Tech Ring of Honor member Donnie Anderson will be honored in Dallas tonight, Friday, the time of this recording, with the 2022 Doak Walker Legends Award. Pretty cool stuff right there. Um, one of the greatest Red Raiders of all time, not only on the field, but off of it as well. Everybody knows how well he's done in terms of keeping the community together in Lubbock, rallying around Texas Tech football, and also just his mere presence around the program. He truly is one of the goats of Texas Tech football and uh, really just Texas Tech athletics in general. So I wanted to give him his shout out. But let's jump out into, well, this is going to be one of the weirder games of the year for Texas Tech because you look at the BPI and West Virginia blows you away. Right, their 80% chance to win this game. The line is not out quite yet, but if I had to guess, I would guess that West Virginia probably is going to be favored by about four, four and a half points in this one. Okay, the reason that you saw in the thumbnail that you have to take this one game at a time is because of this. I tweeted this out a couple of days ago. If you don't follow me on Twitter, do so at RCMB323. Since 2014, here are the Big 12 teams with the fewest conference wins to make the NCAA tournament. It was eight in 2014, eight in 2015. 2016, it was nine. 2017, it was seven. Then you had 2018, eight. 2019, seven. 2021, nine. Last year, seven. Why do I bring this up? Because if you currently look at the Big 12 standings right now, the winner of this game tomorrow potentially goes to five wins if you're West Virginia or four, and Texas Tech ties them in the standings. Same record and all. Why is that significant? Currently right now, Joe Lenardi, Bracketology over at ESPN, has the West Virginia Mountaineers as one of the last four buys in the NCAA tournament. Now, do I think it's as simple as if Texas Tech beats West Virginia in Morgantown tomorrow, they take that spot? No, I don't. But it does give you a good indication of how many teams could potentially make the NCAA tournament if, if they get to seven wins, which I feel like is the bare minimum you can have in the Big 12. Texas Tech would be on their way to doing that. Now they would have little to no room for air, but it is possible. Now, when you look at the game against West Virginia, what kind of stands out? They score more points than you. They allow more points than you. You shoot the ball better um, from both inside and outside the arc. You have about the same amount of assists. Rebounding-wise, you actually out-rebound them, right? You get more steals per game. You get more blocks per game. And this is out without Fardos. And I think that that's where things really changed for Texas Tech. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the second half of the video. But I want to ask you this. I know I've asked y'all in the past, right? How many wins does Texas Tech need to get into the NCAA tournament? I want to ask you this. How many bids does the Big 12 get this year? Is it seven? Is it eight? Is it nine? How many teams from the Big 12 make the NCAA tournament? Let me know down on the pinned comment below. All right. The reason I want to talk about Fardaz um, is because I don't think is he, he's getting enough credit right now. He, he's just not um, in terms of what he's done since he's been back from his injury these past two games. And he just brings a certain level of um, he brings a skill set, really, that no other big man on this team has. And we've talked about it a few times this year when we talk about his injury, how that really hampered Texas Tech. I didn't think about these small aspects, though, and the small aspects are this. Fardaz Amak is a very, very good screener. I damn near say elite. 
And that has a trickle down effect to guys like Devion Harmon. And it's no coincidence that Devion Harmon is having his best stretch of his college career um, these past five games, particularly these past two games. But in this past five game stretch, this from Ryan Mainville of the Gambling Gauchos, he tweeted out this, Devion Harmon over his last five games, 18 points per game, four assists, 19 assists to seven turnovers, three rebounds a game, a steal per game, shooting 44.5% from the field, 37.5% from three, and 73% from the line. That is an all Big 12 type guard. That is not necessarily the guard we thought we were getting in Devion Harmon, but he has elevated his game, especially in transition, and especially when him and Fardos are running the pick and roll. I tweeted this out um, from Fardos' trainer, who is Harp. He's known as at 3C Training over on Twitter. He said, impactful game for Fardos Amac, who's not even 100% close to health for Texas Tech. He had 12 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. When watching the tape, the things that stand out from Fardos against Texas and Kansas State are this, in my opinion. He has a tremendously high basketball IQ. He is an elite screener, which helps Devion Harmon massively get into space. And when Devion Harmon is in space, we know this season he is an elite guard in the Big 12. It's that simple, right? He has the ability to go off the dribble, does Fardos. And I'm not talking, hey, he's going to beat you down with a crossover or anything like that, but he has the potential to take one of those power dribbles, get to the top of the key, survey the baseline, survey the corner, see if there's any cutters, and if he needs to make the pass, he can. If not, he's got the touch to make it from 15 to 17 feet as well. And that's my next point is his shot. I don't think teams are taking him seriously enough from the top of the key to the three-point line. And that's going to pay huge dividends for Texas Tech, I think, against West Virginia. Because they're going to have to scoot out a little bit more onto the perimeter. And this also allows guys like Kevin O'Banner, Jalen Tyson, Demarion Williams, Kerwin Walton to get into spots where they thrive especially Kevin O'Banner, where he can get to that right corner, read the defense. Do I need to go baseline? Do I just need to sit there for a catch and shoot opportunity? Do I need to scoot out a little bit? Do I need to just collapse to the rim for a rebound opportunity? What do I need to do? I think that's where Kevin O'Banner's best. I also think it's where Jalen Tyson's best. He can find the soft spot in the defense, have a hard cut to the from the three-point line on the arc. He can also collapse to the rim and rebound. He's one of the best wing rebounders in the Big 12. It just allows you to do so much more offensively when you have a guy like Fardos who you trust at the top of the key, not only to pass, but also to shoot and create space for guys like Devion Harmon off the bounce. And now the big thing is this. This is probably what y'all were waiting for in the thumbnail. Pop Isaacs is a game time decision. When it comes to this game, do I think he plays? I truly think it's a coin flip from everything I've heard. But don't get it twisted. When Pop comes back, this is gonna he's not going to have the ball in his hands as much. It's going to be Devion. They found success here. But I think that's actually a good thing. And I'm not saying that Pop isn't going to play point or anything like that. I think he would do better in this offense when Devion runs it. And he kind of takes over that Demarion Williams takes over that Kerwin Walton role where he's on the perimeter finding a soft spot to catch and shoot or take that one dribble, pull up, or he can beat somebody off the dribble to the rim. I think Pop would be, he, he would absolutely thrive, in my opinion, alongside Devion Harmon, the way that Devion is playing right now and the way that Fardos is creating space through really good screens at the top of the key. I think Texas Tech has a really solid chance to beat West Virginia. That being said, Morgantown is one of the toughest places to play, not only in the Big 12, but in America. And at 11 a.m., 10 a.m. your time, because remember, it jumps forward there. Um, yeah, you're going to be a little bit jet lagged potentially, but this is where your senior step up. I expect Kevin O'Banner, Devion Harmon, and Fardos to have big time games out in Morgantown. The matchup that I'm watching is Trey Mitchell against Fardos. I think Fardos can win that matchup, and I'm expecting to see Devion Harmon continue this hot stretch. All right. Let me know your score predictions down in the comments below, and I'd be remiss not to mention one more time, thank you all so much for all the new subscribers, but more importantly, shout out to all you OG Back to 12 squad members. We really appreciate y'all. I know there's some of y'all that were commenting. I've been here since day one. I've been here since, you know, less than 100 subscribers. We appreciate each and every one of you. Tell your friends about the channel. And if you haven't already, you're watching this channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long, right here on your one-stop shop for everything Texas Tech and Big 12 Athletics, right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.